Dear audience, welcome back to our channel. In the Chinese technology industry, Xu Wenwei's name is undoubtedly a shining symbol. Not only is he the director of the Strategic Research Institute of Huawei Technologies Company, Limited, but he is also a leading figure in the field of Huawei chips. His achievements are not only reflected in technological innovation, but also in his significant contributions to the advancement and development of the Chinese technology industry. However, with his nomination as a member of the Chinese Academy of Engineering, we cannot help but wonder, in the flourishing development of Chinese technology, what is the influence of key figures like Xu Wenwei, representing companies like Huawei, on the Chinese technology industry? How does his technological innovation align with national strategy? How do we evaluate Huawei's achievements and challenges in the field of independent chip development? Xu Wenwei, Director of the Strategic Research Institute of Huawei Technologies Company, Limited, and a leader in Huawei's chip domain. He spearheaded projects such as Huawei's first-generation local exchange program controlled switch and the development of the first chip, laying the foundation for the rise of high silicon semiconductor. He has made significant contributions to chip development, innovation in information technology, and was awarded the 2022 He Liang He Li Foundation Science and Technology Award. As one of the candidates for membership in the Chinese Academy of Engineering, Xu Wenwei's nomination is supported by academician Yang Shanlin. In the 2023 supplementary election list, there were a total of 655 candidates, with 95 from the Department of Information and Electronic Engineering. This is Xu Wenwei's second attempt, having previously run in 2021. However, whether he can be successfully elected still depends on multiple stages such as preliminary selection and final selection, with the final results to be announced in January 2024. Xu Wenwei's technological contributions are self-evident. Since joining Huawei in 1991, he has been committed to research, product development, and industrial expansion in the field of communication technology, which can be divided into three stages in his career. During Huawei's initial stage, he led the development of Huawei's first-generation local exchange program controlled switch, breaking the monopoly of foreign vendors and gaining market share and reputation. He also led the development of Huawei's first chip, laying the foundation for Huawei's chip self-reliance established Huawei's Integrated Circuit Design Center and cultivated a group of chip talents, making significant contributions to the development of Huawei's chip business. During Huawei's expansion phase, he shifted to the wireless communication field, leading the development of China's first set of wireless GSM systems, opening up new prospects for Huawei's entry into the mobile communication market. He also participated in Huawei's internationalization strategy, serving as president of the European region, promoting Huawei's overseas business expansion and providing guidance for Huawei's brand building and market positioning. During Huawei's innovation phase, he returned to technical research and development, serving as the director of Huawei Strategic Research Institute, responsible for cutting-edge technology research and pre-research. He led the development of major technologies and products such as the world's largest capacity cloud data switch and next-generation optical transmission technology, making outstanding contributions to Huawei's innovation and leading position in cloud computing, big data, and artificial intelligence fields. How did Xu Wenwei lead Huawei to success in different stages? What insights does his experience offer to other technology companies? At that time, Huawei faced difficulties in recruiting talent. Ren Jingfei knew very well that attracting top talents was essential for developing independent products. Xu Wenwei was right in front of him, and Ren Jingfei naturally wouldn't miss the opportunity. Although Yilida was a well-known Hong Kong-funded enterprise, Huawei was a small company facing huge challenges. Despite offering competitive salaries, Huawei often couldn't afford to pay them, and life was tough. With no money and limited strength, how did Ren Jingfei manage to recruit Xu Wenwei? He infected Xu Wenwei with passion and a grand vision, causing him to abandon his comfortable job and join this risky, individual household established by fishermen. Even though he faced resistance from Yilida, Xu Wenwei chose Huawei without hesitation, enduring hardships as a result. 
Beside Xu Wenwei, Ren Jingfei also tried to recruit his colleague Gao Mai Song, but the latter was not interested in his dream, merely smiling it off. Where does the charm of a leader lie? Is it the power of personal beliefs or the allure of vision? At that time, Ren Jingfei couldn't even afford a branded belt and had to make do with cheap ones from the streets. He persisted in talking about dreams and the future, but in Gao Meisong's eyes, he was just a big talker. Henry Kissinger once said that leaders must lead people from where they are now to the unknown. Indeed, sometimes, choices in life are more important than efforts. At the time, Xu Wenwei was only 28 years old, affectionately referred to as Big Xu by Huawei employees. Today, he is a member of Huawei's board of directors, the director of the Strategic Research Institute, and was nominated as a member of the Engineering Management Division of the Chinese Academy of Engineering in 2021. Xu Wenwei quickly established an ASIC design center within Huawei, initially called the Device Room focusing on PCB design and chip design. He first designed his circuits, then commissioned a Hong Kong company to design them into ASIC chips, ultimately successfully manufacturing and producing them. In 1991, Huawei produced its first ASIC chip with independent intellectual property rights. This marked the beginning of Huawei's chip business, which later developed into ASIC chips with tens of thousands, millions and tens of millions of gates. At the time, Huawei was fully focused on developing the C and C08 digital program controlled switch, with chips being crucial. The situation was extremely grim, the boss was worried, and engineers were under immense pressure. These young engineers had no foundation in digital program controlled switch technology, but had to develop products that even National Research Institute struggled with, facing formidable challenges. How did Huawei engineers overcome technical obstacles and create a successful start for Huawei's chip business? How did leaders' inspiration and organizational cooperation drive technological breakthroughs and innovation? Ren Jingfei had always been concerned about the company's financial situation, believing that Huawei's survival depended on the successful development of digital switches. Despite financial constraints, he always held on to ideals and passion. At night, he often personally delivered supper to boost morale. Standing on a box, he boldly proclaimed, in 10 years, Huawei will be on par with AT&T and Alcatel. Engineers laughed, but Ren Zhengfei was serious and continued to devote himself fully. At a critical moment, Xu Wenwei introduced an expert, Li Zheng, a chip design specialist from Waxi Huijing Electronics. With Li Zhang's joining, Huawei's self-designed ASIC chip SD509 was successfully launched in 1993, achieving the core function of the digital switch, non-blocking time slot switching. How did leaders' beliefs and passion inspire teams in difficult situations? Where did Huawei's path to success begin, and how did it evolve into a global leader? The self-developed chip not only significantly reduced the cost of Huawei's C and C08 digital machine but also made it more compact and aesthetically pleasing, allowing Huawei's digital machines to quickly enter the vast rural market at half the price of similar products. Since then, Huawei has achieved leapfrog development and entered the fast lane. In 1994, C and C08 sales reached 800 million yuan, reaching 1.5 billion yuan in 1995. By 2003, Cumulative sales reached hundreds of billions of yuan, becoming the mainstream model in the industry and the world's largest selling switch model. With the successful start by Big Xu, Huawei's second in command, Zheng Baoyong, with great strategic vision, established the Central Research Department, beginning large scale and centralized research and development. The Central Research Department consisted of basic research, wireless, switches, intelligence, and other business departments, with the basic research department primarily focusing on Huawei's chip development, with Xu Wenwei as the general manager and Li Zheng as the chief engineer. The sole goal of the basic research department was to design chips for communication systems, ensuring the smooth sailing of the main channel. Huawei's Hisilicon and Kirin chips later originated from this department. 
How do leaders drive enterprise development through strategic vision and scientific planning? Can Huawei's successful experience provide inspiration for other industries? Finally, let me summarize today's video, hoping it has inspired and provided value to you. As a seasoned technology blogger, I deeply understand Huawei's spirit of hard work. Huawei is not just a technology company but also a symbol of China's technological strength. In Huawei's journey, Xu Wenwei and other outstanding talents, along with countless ordinary employees, shoulder the mission and dream, tirelessly striving for the development of China's technology industry. They grow in challenges, move forward in difficulties, constantly break through technological barriers, and propel Chinese technology onto the world stage. Huawei's development process is full of hardships and struggles. From being poor and backward to becoming an international giant, each step embodies the sweat and wisdom of Huawei people. In the fiercely competitive global technology field, Huawei has always adhered to the concept of independent innovation, persistently pursuing technological breakthroughs and progress. Therefore, let us consider, what insights does Huawei's spirit of struggle bring us? How should we inherit and carry forward this spirit on the road of technological innovation? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section. Today's video ends here. See you next time for more exciting content. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.